I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air, the home of great American short plays on radio and podcast. Today's play, Evening at Anaheim, by the late James Stevenson, was co-presented in front of a live audience off-Broadway at Playwrights Horizons. Over Mr. Stevenson's storied career as a writer, illustrator, and cartoonist, which included four decades at The New Yorker, Mr. Stevenson has published over 100 books for children. He is also the namesake of Playing On Air's new major playwriting prize for short comedy, celebrating his brilliance, friendship, and ongoing legacy. Evening at Anaheim is directed by five-time Tony nominee Dana Ivey. Its ensemble cast of TV, film, and Broadway mainstays includes Emily Burgle, Carson Elrod, Richard Kind, Peter Maloney, Tom Allen Robbins, Brandon Uranowitz, and Tony winner Karen Ziemba. We'll hear from the director and company after the play. And now, Evening at Anaheim. The play is in four scenes, indicated by a brief interval of music between them. It spans a period of two days. It takes place entirely on the front porch of the Anaheim Home for Stars a seedy-looking retirement home on a back street of Los Angeles. A faded sign hangs over its screen door. Snow White shakes a dust mop over the porch railing as she sings. Someday my prince will come. Someday I'll come. Snow, knock it off, will ya? Oh, hello, Grumpy. (laughs) How was the funeral? Ah! Left early. Why? Why not? You seen one, you seen them all. I only went to make sure that Italian bastard was really dead. You should have more respect for Pinocchio. Yeah, well, he stole his last line now. How come you didn't go, Snow? I can't stand any more funerals. Yeah, me neither. One casket don't do it for me anyway. Not after the big one. Don't. Talk about it, Grumpy. Hey, it was my family, not yours, sweetheart. Six little caskets all in a row. (laughs) Fabulous. Please. We had a 57 Chevy then. Cherry red. Deuce coupe with four on the floor. Clean set of wheels. Come on, Grumpy, they said. We'll get a case of Bud. Cruise down to Malibu. Get some burgers. Pick up some girls. I was in a bad mood. I didn't want to go. So Sleepy said he'd drive. That was a big mistake. He fell asleep at the wheel. What are you, kidding? Sleepy never slept. He was wired. Used to get Dixies and uppers from Doc. Anyway, they jump in the Chevy and room. Oh, man. The day put on a smoke show. Burn rubber laid a path a mile long. Never saw those bums again. I can't bear it. Yeah, cops said they must have been redlining when they went off the pier. Such a waste. Ah, bull crap. We were finished in pictures anyway. Hey, Donald, give us a quack quack. Yeah, I don't do shtick. Yeah, or anything else, duck. Listen to him. Do you know they said he was too ugly to be a munchkin? That's a lie. Come on, you two. Look, I hear, uh, I hear you leaving your body to a pillow factory, duck. I gotta get out of this dump. I'm going up a wall. Hi, Goofy. Oh, no. No, 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 not him. Try to be civil. Goofy's nice. Yup. Nope. Yup. I'm gonna make that yokel talk for once. Oh, hiya. Hi, Goof. Been to the funeral, have you? Yep. Old Pinocchio's gone, eh? Yep. Anything special happen? Nope. Guess we'll all miss that little guy, huh? Yep. Guess it's a better place up there. Yep. You won't mind when your time comes, huh? Nope. Then why don't you drop dead, you dumb cluck? Goofy, do you dislike Donald? Nope. 
You should talk to him more. Huh? It bothers him when you're so silent. Oh, well, you see, Snow, I feel that taciturnity is an appropriate response to Donald's aggressive social behavior. <laughs> His deep-seated hostility, frustration, and inability to come to terms with reality seek an outlet in the form of confrontation, and frankly, I don't need that. Really? Nope. <laughs> I don't. Pardon me, ma'am. Is this the Anaheim home? Sure is. Hi. I'm Ready Kilowatt. We're expecting you, but I don't believe we've met. Ready Kilowatt. Zzz, zzz, Mr. Electricity. Gee, I'm sorry, but were you in pictures? No. I'm from industry. You don't remember me? Zzz, 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 zzz. I'm not sure. Hi there. I'm Ready Kilowatt. Zzz, zzz, zzz. If you're selling light bulbs, I don't want any. I'm not selling. I'm moving in. Where'd you come from? I was the spokesperson for the power companies, Electric Energy. Didn't you ever see my picture? They had me all over their ads and on their bills, too. Hi, I'm Ready Kilowatt. <laughs> I told people to buy toasters and TVs and air conditioners. Electricity's great, I said. Use it. <laughs> what happened? You got the ax? Times change. Ah, don't feel sorry for yourself. We all got the heave-ho. Anybody else here from industry? Not right now, but we've had a lot. If it's Westinghouse, it's got to be good. <laughs> Is that? Yes, that's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it. Numero uno. Oh, Miss White. Did I receive any calls? I don't believe so. I'm expecting a call. May I present Mr. Kilowatt? How do you do, sir? This is a great honor. I'm a big fan. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to have been able to bring a little sunshine and laughter into people's lives. Well, you sure did, sir. Everybody loves you. Would you care to see the gift that Walt gave me when I retired? Oh, boy, I sure would. Walt insisted upon presenting me with a personal gift. Frankly, I was deeply moved by this pocket watch. Oh, I love those. I have See, Isn't that something? It's got Mickey's picture on the face. Yes, and if you will observe the hands pointing to the time, are my hands. <laughs> Ingenious. It must make you very proud. I treasure it. The hands go around and around. Life goes on, and one day soon, when the hands point to a certain hour, why, the telephone will ring, and it will be Walt. Hello, Mick, he'll say. I've been thinking about you. He said he'd call, you know, as soon as the right thing comes along. Pleasure, Mr. Kilowatt. Nobody's told him that Walt's dead, huh? He would break his heart. Around here, we try to be gentle with each other. What she means is nobody faces facts. Me, I'm just passing through here, strictly temporary. I think I'll take a look-see at my room. It's a third door on the right. Maybe I'll put some new bulbs in the hall. Brighten it up. That guy needs a new fuse. <laughs> You're getting worse than grumpy. Eh, it's just his shtick. He loves it here. I'm different. I hate this place, and I'm leaving. Leaving? Tomorrow. The minute I'm packed, I hit the road. Oh, sure. You'll see. Watch my dust. <laughs> Where in the world will you go, Donald? Straight over to Walt's stupid amusement park. That's not a good idea. They won't even let you in. Oh, yeah? When the people see me, they'll carry me in. On their shoulders, they'll go crazy. It's Donald! The real Donald! Are you sure you want to take that chance? I'm not going to rot in this dump. Look what's happened to Mickey and everybody else. They'll hurt you. Me? I'm tough. I'm tough, Snow. Pow! Bam! Bam! I mean, what if they just don't care? People forget. Forget me? Listen, you're not talking some bit player from Looney Tunes. I'm down. I hope you're right. The day if they forget me, kid, I cash in my chips. I'll do it myself, and no slow fade either, you know? Kablam! Don't ever say that! Now relax. I'm making a comeback. <gasps> That's wonderful. I figured dinner theater's to start. We'll miss you, Donald. You don't have to miss me, Snow. 
You could come along for the ride. Oh, thanks, Donald, but I have to stay here. There's room for two in my dream, kid. Why not give it a whirl? I can't. I go for you in a big way. It just wouldn't work. No go, huh? Sorry. You know, I know what it is. I know. You're a beautiful, gorgeous woman, and I'm... a duck. Uh, no, that's not it. It's gotta be a factor. Is it the webbed feet? No. It's my sailor hat. No, no. It's the feather. You're allergic? Uh, not that either. Look, I don't want to brag, Snow, but I've known a lot of women, and they'll all tell you the same thing. It's better with feathers. <laughs> I'm sure it is, Don. But I can't go with you. Tell me, no. what's the problem? The fact is, I've got this prince coming. Yeah, when? Someday. You still believe that bull crap? It's all I've got. It's time for me to get out of here. I got some packing to do. Someday. My prince will come Someday I'll find my love Hey, Snow, come out on the porch. You're missing many. Lovely men. Just lovely. Brava, my dear, brava. Come on, men. La chi darem la mano, la mi di ride si. Verdi nori lontano. Part yam ben yo da qui. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how about you, Mickey? Give us a poem. Oh, oh, oh uh, now let me see. Um, when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, <laughs> I all alone beweep my outcast state. Wait, was that the phone? I didn't hear it. And trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my face. Is that the... No, Mick, go on. Go on. I, I don't remember anymore, Min. Uh, well, something else. It doesn't matter. Uh, blow, blow, thou winter wind. Thou art not so unkind as man's ingratitude. You see, Goofy, it's got to be the bard. Huh? For a return engagement, it must be something special. Oh. That's why he doesn't call. He's looking for the proper vehicle. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, exactly the song and dance years, the slapstick comedy. That's gone and done. I paid my dues. You can't repeat. You've got to grow in this business, Goof. Grow or die. Almost time for bed, dear. Getting late. Walt's a showman, Goof. He knows the business. It came to me in a flash. He is looking, and it is my duty to be prepared. I'm not a juvenile anymore. I know that. So what do you think I'm learning now? Oh, uh, Polonius? I'm not a supporting player, you fool. I'm sorry, Mick. I didn't mean I to I remain a star. Lear. It's got <sighs> to be Lear. Of course. And I am ready, Goof. I'm ready when he calls. Poor naked wretches, whatsoe'er you are that bid the pelting of this pitiless storm, how shall your houseless heads and unfed sides, your looped and windowed raggedness? <laughs> it's bedtime, Mick. <laughs> Good night, Goofy. Good night, men. How Good night, shall, Mick. How shall your houseless heads and unfed sides? <laughs> Watch the stairs, dear. Your looped and windowed raggedness defend you from seasons such as these. Oh, the balloons are beautiful already. Oh, uh, Goofy, your sign, break a leg, Goof, it's B-R-E-A. Here he comes. Oh, shh, 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 quiet, quiet, quiet. Hide, hide, shh! For a son of a gun of a gunner was he. 
the hell is everybody? Surprise! Surprise! Oh, you so me. We all wish you a lot of luck, Don. You're really up for it, aren't you? Bet your bottom dollar, goof. I'm ready. Got my talent all tuned up. No more waiting in the wings. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Hey, hey! hey anyone? Hey, tone it down, will ya? The hell is this? Donald's leaving. Leaving? Where do you think you're going? Back to the big time. Yeah, fat chance. This is au revoir. Yeah, bananas. I'm the only one with guts enough to get out of here. Why don't you give it a try, pickle face? Hey, I know when I'm not wanted, feather brain. Too bad you don't. What kind of a farewell party is this? Come on. Go ahead. Fall on your face. See if I care. Bathroom free. Not one of those dwarfs was ever anything but a total pain in the butt. <laughs> Listen, Donald, lots of luck. I hope you light up the skies. <laughs> Thanks, Reddy. Say, why don't you come along? You're still young. They don't want me out there. I'm finished as far as they're concerned. Just gonna give up, huh? I guess so. Aren't you even angry? Darn right I'm angry, but <laughs> I am trying to keep it under control. <laughs> You know what I'd do if I were you? I'd strike back at those bastards. They're not bastards. They're really big companies. <laughs> a really big company is just a lot of little bastards acting like a big bastard. <laughs> well, there's nothing I could do to them. You could really screw them up. I could. How? I don't know. You could short circuit Los Angeles. You could black out America. Oh, no, don't get him all excited, Don. Well, Reddy knows all about electricity. Well, it's complex. It's very complex. Interlocking power grids, transmission lines, relay stations. See, you do know. I was in the business quite a while until they... Well, relax, Reddy. Donald isn't serious. Oh, yeah? You could do it, Reddy. You could do it for all of us. Every dumped on, kicked around, used up and forgotten sad sack here. But, but I'm just a, a salesman, Donald. Attention must be paid. <laughs> revenge, Reddy, revenge. No, no, no. Zzzzed. I could never, no, uh, no. Uh, okay. All right, that's, that's okay. Well, I gotta hit the road. The park opens at 10. Lots of luck, Don. We'll miss you, Donald. Thanks, Snow. <laughs> no matter how big I get, I won't forget my friends. They'll be bluebirds <laughs> over the white cliffs of Dover. Tomorrow, just you wait and see. Hold the applause, folks. T for two and two for T. Me for you and you for oh. me alone. Go! Alone and the big finish halftime. Please don't talk about me when I'm gone because. It was a terrible accident. I just can't believe it. Crazy duck. <laughs> now Reddy's gone too. <laughs> what do you mean? Reddy left. There's a note. I guess he was upset about Donald. He's never coming back. Oh, I'll be darned. Never coming back, Bull. There's nowhere else to go. Donald found out. Please. Poor bastard. What a nut job. Excuse me? You're not very sensitive, Grumpy. Snow loved Donald. Ha! He took the easy way out. Well, it wasn't easy for him. Uh, served him right. Never should have gone over to that amusement park expecting a big welcome. They kicked the bejesus at him, threw him out on the street. Came back here, blew his brains out. Stupid duck. You just stupid duck. Oh, oh, we just heard a terrible thing. He terrible. was a very talented performer. A great loss to the profession. 
He brought sunshine to millions ah, of- Cut it out, will you? What? He likes my watch. Walt presented it to me upon my retirement. Ah, oh, Jesus. Most unusual, isn't it? I'm expecting a call from him momentarily. Walt's dead. Grumpy! <laughs> I beg your pardon? Grumpy's very upset about Donald. Walt's dead, Mickey. You might as well know. I don't believe him. It's not true. Come on, Grumpy. Time to go inside. Men? Walt died years ago, Mickey. It doesn't matter, see? He didn't need us anymore. Nobody else does either. We're on our own. That's the way it is. This is cruel and unforgivable, Grumpy. The other way is worse, men. Look at Donald. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mickey. Walt and I were very close. I, I had faith in him. Complete trust. We all did, Mickey. Blow, blow, thou winter wind. Bedtime, Mickey. Oh, hey, what's happening? The lights keep flickering. Hey, hey, the hell's wrong with these damn lights? We'll all be darned. Look, Anaheim is blacking out. There goes the amusement park. Ah, damnation. Can't see a damn thing in here. There goes Beverly Hills. Not even street lights. Ah, this is the limit. The whole city is blacking out. Typical. Power companies. Phooey. I don't think it is the power companies. Well, it's something. It's got to be. No. No, no. No. It couldn't be. Yes, it could. It's ready. It's ready! It's ready! It's one of our guys! Do you really think it's ready? It's him, all right! Sock it to him, Red! That's the way, Reddy! Bravo! Do the whole country ready! Denver! Chicago! New York! I never thought he'd do it! He's doing it for Donald! He's doing it for all of us! There's no light anywhere! Wow! Wow! Oh, the sky pilot said it! You've got to give him credit for a son of a gun of a gunner was he. There, there's one motor gun I will still carry on. Coming in on a wing and a prayer. Over there, over there. Oh, the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming. And we won't be back till it's over, over there. Blow winds and crack your feet. Rain, the word, blow the word, your cataracts and hurricanes spout till you have drenched our steeple. Oh, my! Hear knocking at the back door? Something, 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 something uh, singe my white head, and thou all shaking thunder strike flat the thick rotundity of the world. Oh, snow! There's somebody at the back door. He's asking for you. Who is it? He's on a horse. Somebody charming? <gasps> He's come. You just heard Evening at Anaheim by James Stevenson, directed by Dana Ivey. In its cast was Emily Burgle as Snow White, Carson Elrod as Reddy Kilowatt, Richard Kind as Grumpy, Peter Maloney as Mickey Mouse, Tom Allen Robbins as Goofy, Brandon Uranowitz as Donald Duck, and Karen Ziemba as Minnie Mouse. Hi, everyone. Dana Ivey, director. James Stevenson is sadly no longer with us. He was a world-class cartoonist, so it's exciting that he wrote a play using some of the most familiar cartoon characters of all time from the world of animation and reimagined them. What most surprises you about that reimagining? Well, I think the thing that most surprises me is, first of all, they're older, 
and for me, they're eternally the age they were in the cartoons. And uh, secondly, um, you know, they have issues that a lot of us have, which you don't uh, assume for cartoon characters. So they have a reality to them that goes beyond just what we think of as a cartoon character. Yeah. For those of you who have been artists for decades, where does this play really hit home for you? Well, you can't be an adult in the world today and not despair over the ignorance of the young. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are the characters that I grew up with. I have two kids. My daughter is actually studying at uh, Cal Arts and the Art of Animation in a, a college founded by Walt Disney. And so uh, uh, I still have hope that the animation has a, a life that will continue into the future. But these are, these are treasured characters. I mean, most young people don't understand that when you went to a movie, you not only saw the movie, but before the movie, there would be at least one cartoon starring these people that you see on stage today. <laughs> so they had a, uh, the cartoons had a life uh, in the minds and hearts of audiences for an awfully long time. And of course, with the advent of television, that went away. And uh, it's nice to see them revived and honored. By the way, I'm not so thrilled about the ignorance of our older people either. <laughs> what, what, I fi what I find interesting is um, that he took these characters, which all of us, uh, think of as symbols of our youth. Yes. When we think of these characters, we think of them as we were when we were young, and it's juxtaposed with death and decay. <laughs> and I think that's, that's a wonderful combination. I think there's always lots of stuff yeah. there. Interesting, Tom. In the play, these former stars sing vaudeville, pop, opera, they dance, they recite. Uh, Richard Kind and, and Karen Ziemba why do you think Stevenson chose the, the immortals like Shakespeare and classic opera, as well as many expressions of popular art from the 30s and 40s to include in this play? And this is for everybody, really. It's timeless, like these characters. I mean, p p the way that people react, were reacting to each one of, you know, Goofy, when the way he spoke, and the, the, me the memory of who that character was and, and that kind person that you relate to. I know somebody like Goofy, you know, he's a real guy. And, uh, and the fact that they're, they are paying homage to these incredible artists who wrote this music and these, wrote these, these Tin Pan Alley tunes and also the Grand Opera. It's just all part of who they were at that time and what people knew at that time, you know, and uh, and hopefully we will carry on and keep Well, I, I have three kids. Spousing. One's 15 and, and two of them are 12. And I, I, I mean, they, they're kind. very funny kids. They really have great senses of humor. But I showed them bringing up baby. And they did not think it was funny at all. <laughs> I mean, they thought Catherine Hepburn was a horror. They <laughs> said, why doesn't he stand up for himself? And they, they were they were. Anxious. They didn't even think Cary Grant was handsome. Well, I'm, it's, I'm not that. It's, it's bringing up baby. They they got anxious that this man was being tortured. But they didn't not find the humor in it. Um, and I, you know, with the music today, uh, certainly with with the way things with with the way that films are made, TV are made, it's quick cuts, and so entertainment has truly changed. And I think that Stevenson was addressing this. Donald Duck goes back to be celebrated at the amusement park. They throw him out, and they, in my line says, they beat the bejesus out of him. They don't like the entertainment that we liked and how prescient Stevenson was that, especially today, they, they can't even appreciate um, th the type of entertainment that we found so thrilling, so so fulfilling that when we were younger, they don't get it. They just don't get it. And that is timeless because I'm sure 70 years ago they were saying these kids, all they want to do is look at these cartoons of these dumb mice. R I agree with that. I do. I do agree. <laughs> that, you know, these kids today with their long hair and their loud music, <laughs> and I say that all the time. Like that, but it does. It does change. And Stevenson, I think, was commenting on uh, on on such things. 
one of, the, one of the things that I like is whenever there are entertainers, and all of these characters are portrayed in this story as retired entertainers. Entertainers and actors have a tremendous respect for the canon and great work, right? I mean, even before we came up here and read, like down in the green room, you know, there were casual conversations about Shakespeare. And it, it, so in a way, there's this timeless um, evergreen thing of uh, actors celebrating the great bards. So uh, there's comedy just in the fact that there are these cartoon characters who you imagine in one way, but you know, backstage Mickey Mouse really wants to do Lear is, you know what I mean? Well, I think it's Stevenson's way of also sending these characters into that canon, you know what I mean? Right. It's like That's his right. way of sending them off, as it I, were. I also wonder, because I remember when Larry Gelbart was still alive and he was, he was talking about ageism in Hollywood, and I think that's what Stevenson was addressing here. And I wonder, I mean, as a cartoonist, you're ageless at time and nobody knows, uh, you know, whether or not your cart cartoons are being drawn by an older man or a younger man. But I was wondering if you may have felt that. Yeah, I, I, I would think so too, because these are all, it takes place in a, in a home for retired animated stars. And the whole notion of immortality in terms of the greats, like those those operas and those Shakespeare, but maybe what we thought was great. I mean, look at your kids when they went to see um, bringing up baby, bringing up baby. At what point does art also fade and die and become dispensable and forgotten? There was an article in the Times, I think today, maybe yesterday, about Roz Chast, the great cartoonist from the New Yorker and it talks about her coming in to the New Yorker which was the the uh, gigantic edifice of, of cartoon humor and trying to begin her her career in this world which was dominated mainly by men who had a certain worldview and Roz comes in and uh, changes that all around, which took great courage on her part, and, and which took every ounce of her genius. And it's only now that she's really being appreciated for the great artist that she is. By, by the way, not to be so highfalutin New Yorkery, but if anybody sees the cover of the New Yorker this week, it is, they took a, the, an artist who had drawn pictures of people riding in subways, he did the sketches, and they were reading books and magazines and everything. This was in 1940. They asked him, and he's in his 90s now, to go back and draw pictures of people. And he rode the E train up and rode the D train down, and they're all pictures of people on their phone. <laughs> so that's what he saw. All right, that's, that's clear. Uh, Carson, your character represents the sole animated figure from industry. Can you tell us something about Ready Kilowatt, and why do you think James Stevenson included him in this play? Well, that's a really good question, um, and not one that I necessarily can answer. Um, the, I, 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 can, I can tell you that, that I did, you know, dive into, um, you know, the furthest resources uh, of the internet to try to find stuff, and there's only, you know, one or two kind of um, representations of this character that still exists, but ap apparently it was kind of a ubiquitous character at the time. Um, I, and to me, like what was curious about it is just as I was reading it and exploring it, uh, electricity hasn't faded, uh, but I guess using this character, which maybe at some point uh, came to be seen as for children or something uh, diminished, you know, the companies uh, advertised in a different way. But it, it, it's not that electricity went away. You know, he's sitting there, um, you know, so sad about being kind of cast aside. And I, gu I guess it's like the, the other spokes characters. He personified electricity, which helps sell it. Right. Yeah, so exactly. He was the spokesman. He wasn't. Yeah. Well, so the, the uh, short answer is I have no idea. Ah. <laughs> well, if and anyone going to venture a guess? Well, I think one of the reasons is that electricity didn't need being sold anymore. It just took over. So it didn't need a salesman anymore. That, that's what I meant mm. to say. So he's retired. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, that's what I was trying yeah, to say. That's a good point. I mean, there's, there's an animated figure who died, basically. 
I think the writer may also have, have thought, oh, uh, that would be a great character that I could use as a plot point to end it when he destroys the, the power grid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True, but um, right. I, I, how Maybe many people out nostalgia. there know who Reddy, I didn't even know his name, but how many people out oh, look, there there's know? there's actually hands. A oh, decent wow. amount. I remember the cartoon. Well, see, I remember, I had no idea what his name was. I remember the Alka-Seltzer yeah. guy, yeah. you know, yeah, that yeah. one I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. another one. But. You know, what's interesting yeah. is that, um, you know, Snow White is the hero of her story. Minnie Mouse was, you could argue, almost as popular as Mickey Mouse. But yet in this play, the women actually don't have much to say about their journeys or their stories. Maybe he worked at the New Yorker too long. <laughs> 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 and, and, as, and you know, as the play progresses, you know, as as in King Lear and the callousness of the fates and the extremity of the storm, at, at the end, even so, it appears that Snow White's prince has come. So Emily, to wrap this up, hmm. why do you has think my so? prince come? No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Show of hands, please. Show well, I think James Stevenson decided to give you a happy ending. Anyway, what a treat to have you all on Playing on Air. Thank you. You've been listening to Playing on Air, great American short plays with great American actors. Theme and play music, Tom Kocham. Recording and sound design, John Kilgore. Stage manager, Joseph Fernandez. Lights, Katie Hong. Assistant engineer, Alex Swan. House sound, Michael Lennox. Associate producer, Sasha Spitzer. Literary and development director, Lucy Fleming. Marketing and outreach, Bonnie Antosh. Distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. We invite you to visit our website at playingonair.org where you can stream short plays and find information about our artists and plays. Join us on Facebook or Twitter and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. While you're there, leave us a review. We value your opinion. For Playing On Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening.